Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. Rejoice. It is Friday. We thank you all for tuning in again, as always. Uh, we have another special show uh, in store for you guys today. We have Coach Aaron Howard on with us. He, Coach Aaron Howard, played under Coach King at Brentwood. He was on staff um, when I was a player there uh, under Coach King. He was a huge part um, of what we had going on at Brentwood from about 2010 to 2016. Uh, Aaron was the head coach at Page High School this past year. We talk about how that came to an end and, and that whole scenario. Uh, he was also a ops guy under Jan Van Bredikoff and his staff uh, at St. Bonaventure back in 2001. And uh, he was he was awesome, awesome guy to talk to. He gave us an awesome basketball conversation. So we hope you all enjoyed that. Um, again, hope you all have a, have a fantastic weekend. Happy Fourth of July. Rest in peace, Steve McNair. Um, and as always, like, share, subscribe, do whatever it is you do to help get the word out there. Appreciate it. Love y'all. What is up? I forget that you still wear headphones. Do you like that? It's cool. I need to give me some headphones. It'd be cooler to wear something else, like yeah. some AirPods or something, but you know, beggars cannot be choosers. Does the trick. Yep. So I'm in the new office setup. So the, the the new crib? Yeah. So I just threw three things behind me just to make it look like it was decent. <laughs> we uh that's should cool. get some stuff right here, but we both got some know. going on. That's why I'm I'm in the uh, I'm in the office today and uh you know, we got some moving going on at home, so I don't want to mess with any of that. But uh, yeah, we got a uh, we got a lot going on. So yeah, I mean, I kind of like being in office right now. I, like I mean, it. it's a it's a nice background yeah. for anything else. It's we got the you know the old school logo. Got a new logo now, but um, so still we, looks good. Yeah, I think it looks pretty decent. So you got me a nice chair. This is much better than my chair at home. Wow, that is that's a swivel right there. It is, yeah. Nice and those hardcore I like, swivels. I feel like a, a a three times better podcaster already, just because I got the swivel going on. What's up? Anyway, uh, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, man. We uh we just wrapped up, I guess what you would call session one of summer. Um, oh yeah, June summer workouts. Yeah, so uh, you know, I, well, we got the fourth this weekend. So guys got a couple days off. Uh, they can go home if they want to. Um, but we had a really really good session. Uh. Uh, this first session in June with the team, even Penny said it today. He said, "You know, I'd, I'd, I'd give y'all an A uh, for the June session." Um, so it was, uh, it was, it was good, man. We had a pretty big day uh, on Tuesday this week. Uh, had a had a big time recruit on campus, so that was fun. Um, uh, we'll see how that turns out. Uh, but man, there's been, there's been a lot going on. We got our new floor down. Um, mm-hmm. So now I'm, I was telling you last week how we don't have uh, how I was me and Tata were driving over across campus in the you know middle of the heat trying to set up in keen uh in the old gym now we got our new floor down so we're all back in gentry um and Dude, the floor looks, looks awesome you know the floor looks incredible man it looks incredible yeah. um but yeah so I'm, I'm i'm enjoying these next this this weekend uh fourth coming up you got uh, tomorrow and friday off so um it'll be uh I, I, yeah i'm excited for a few days off but also excited for everybody to get back after the fourth um but it's been good man it's been going real well it's been going real well Dude, love to hear that. Uh, however, I might revoke your spinny chair privileges if you keep swaying back and forth like that. You're going to me, make me throw up. <laughs> I know, I know. On I set. <laughs> <laughs> but good, man. Good. So um, the playoffs right now, let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. So yeah. The playoffs, we got a 2-2 two, two, and a 3-2. 2-2 two. Um, so, two, right. two between the Hawks and the Bucks and a 3-2 Suns over Clippers. Mm-hmm. Um, who you got coming out of the West? Suns I'm worried Clippers. about I'm worried about the Suns right now. So I I think the Clippers are going to push it to a game seven. And like they're they're up three two, right? We just said that the Suns are correct. Yeah. Um. And then uh, I mean I, I think oh gosh, I mean the Bucks have to have to win the series, right? I know Giannis hyperextended his knee, but they said there's no struct. They just came out earlier today, so there's no structural damage to it. But his timeline or his, his return is unclear. I mean, I, I have to go with the Bucks, and I'm going with the Bucks and the Clippers at this point. I want the Suns to win, but I think I'm changing from hopping on your bandwagon a couple weeks ago, and I think that it's going to be Bucks and Clippers. I, I honestly don't think that's a bad guess, except for you might get both wrong. Um, True. That's, yeah. but, but what I'm about to say, I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> At like just because who knows with this playoffs but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say this i think the clippers win tonight yeah so I, I think the clippers force a game seven and i think the suns win game seven yeah and here's why because i think the suns chris paul's just got to get back in the groove mm-hmm. when chris paul is their best player running everything running the show and then devin booker gets to do what devin booker does mm-hmm. and andre ayton is you know deandre ayton excuse mm-hmm. me is getting to just purely run to the rim, get lobs, easy buckets early. 
I got Suns. And honestly, I think I'm taking the Suns to win it all. I hope you're right. I would, lo- I would love for the Suns to win it. This would be an amazing year for the Suns. I, I, I would really, really like the Suns winning it. Um, I'm also going to say this. Chris Paul looks a little fatigued, I'm though. a Paul I mean, George I mean, fan. I've been a Paul George fan since the Pacers. Um, you know, so if he, if he was to get a ring without Kawhi, hey, I, I, dude, there's not a all. team left that I would be it. upset about winning it. Is there more of an asterisk this year than the bubble, this season, than the bubble season? There has to be. No way. Why How? not? Everybody's hurt. How? Everybody's hurt. Okay, so let's go through it then. Everybody's hurt. At least last year was all the same. Every, everybody's hurt. Okay, then everybody has to go through it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but. So here's my thing. If the Suns win it all, they had the toughest road. Now, you, now, some would say, okay, they Did played they? against a Jamal Murray-less Nuggets. They played against an Anthony Davis-less Lakers, and that they're playing a Kawhi-less um, Clippers. Yeah. However, I would say this. They beat the Lakers no matter what. Before AD went down, it wasn't like the Lakers were I'm just I'm not saying them. no matter what. If AD the goes Suns, into the playoffs healthy and he plays, there's no way that they're, meeting, that they're beating them no matter what. If, if LeBron I'm and saying, AD are healthy, absolutely well, not. Okay, well, if everybody was healthy. I mean, if Michael Jordan everybody, was well, still every, healthy and playing like he was 32 who? years old, then yeah. the Bulls, I think, would have a fair shot at the title. Injuries are a part of the game. They are a part of the game. Okay, but when then every single say, superstar. No, no, no. I'm, because I'm about to use the your most important players that are still playing are hurt. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna use an argument against your favorite player. So LeBron, right? Last year, right? LeBron. Yeah. So he he did he ever have to play Kevin Durant? Because Kevin Durant didn't play. Kevin Durant didn't play the whole year. Though. Steph Curry. We knew Clay Kevin Thompson did. didn't play. Clay Thompson. Yeah, they didn't play the whole year. Clay Thompson didn't play the whole year though. Oh, okay. So that's different. Yeah, it's different. It's absolutely different. They both didn't play. I know for the whole year, so it's not like they just got hurt but right before the postseason. Come on. It's and the same and KD was in the East. They had, to, they had to get there. What I'm saying is he didn't have to face KD in a final. I know because he was out that year. He, he had to face – and I love Jimmy Butler, but his, his hardest game was against Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero. True, 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 true. And um, this is me speaking very objectively because I, mean, the, I, I love LeBron. The, what was the um, – who who they play uh, in the Western Conference Finals? It was uh, – there was Nuggets. The Nuggets, right? Yeah. I don't know. I just – everybody Come wants on. to throw – everybody's so quick to throw an asterisk on last season, and I'm like – I, I just – I'm not I throwing think, an asterisk on either. You I know you're not, but a lot of people are. a championship. And – I, I, I just hope – I think Giannis will be out game five, and he's going to come back game six would be my guess. Yeah. But, I mean, Trey Young was out. They went great – and. The Hawks can play now. They, they got a team. And yeah. shout out to Nate McMillan. The fact that he still has intern by his name is blasphemous. They should really? Sign what do you mean? I didn't realize that. Yeah. They need to go ahead and sign him before the season ends to as much money as they're giving Trey because yeah. that dude has done a phenomenal job. Yeah. I mean, yeah. phenomenal. I, I realized he was the interim or he was still listed as the interim. Yeah. So, um, but okay. So I got Suns coming out of that side. I truly have no idea. I mean, if, so if Giannis comes back and plays and he's still Giannis, then Chris Middleton has to be their go-to guy. Like, he's got to be the guy because you're going to get 30 and 15 from Giannis, right. and then you've got to get 25 to 30 from Chris. If right. you can do that, I got the Bucks. If they can do that two more times, I got the Bucks. Right. However, I don't know if that's going to happen, Asa, and I'm leaning towards the Hawks. God. Mm. But my gut... I, 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 is Trey, I'm sorry. What's the, what's the injury report on, on Trey? Is he, is there a chance he comes back at all? Okay. So this is my prediction. Yes. Okay. He's going to be back, bro. He just tweaked his ankle. Okay. Trey Young's coming back this next game. I Hawks do need to win. apologize to Trey, by the way. I need to apologize yeah. to Trey. Hawks are going to win this next game. Bucks are taking the next two. They're going to be in a uh, championship versus Suns. Mm. Okay. Uh, we'll see. It's a game by game decision for me. But it's a weird anyway. playoffs, dude. It's a it's it's a fun play. I'm not saying it's not fun. It isn't. I I I like not having a dog in the fight. Let LeBron not be in there. I don't have to stress about it as much. Um, <laughs> seriously, it's much much more enjoyable. Um, I will say though, there's not that one guy that I'm like. Whether it was Steph, Kevin Durant, um, Kawhi, 
there's not that one guy that I'm just looking forward to go see to drop. Like this guy might just have a crazy special game. And that's not a knock on Devin Booker or Paul George, Trey Young, Giannis. It's not a knock on them at all. It's just LeBron did it consistently. Yeah. And the elevation he typically had going into the playoffs is just absurd. And Kawhi, like the special things he did, the the game winners, you know, I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't see that from Trey young. I see the only person I really see is it being Devin Booker, or Paul George. Yeah. One of the things that I, I've, I've, this isn't really new uh, news, but um, one of the things I feel like this year is uh, magnified a little bit is that even the teams with the superstars that win it, they're, they're not great teams. Anytime a team that has a superstar go down, they, 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 there's just not a lot of great teams in the NBA anymore. It's just, it's just, it's teams with a couple great players, superstars. And if they go down, then, well, they're not, it's not even close to the same team. And I understand if your best player gets hurt, then, but still, I mean, there has to be some sort of pickup somewhere. And there's not a lot of just great teams. And it's been, I think it's been that and, way for a while. I'm just and, not, and I understand what you're saying, but I feel that's why I think these four teams left are very special because I actually do think these four teams are good are, teams. Are good teams. Yeah. 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 I mean, Paul George, obviously, you had two superstars, and Paul George has taken a Robin role this whole time. Yeah, and you've seen that he can still do it. Yeah, like he can still be the Batman. Um, he just needed more pieces around him than he had, and you know, in Indy. I mean, it's as right. simple as that. Um, Trey Young is he a superstar? I don't put him up there yet. I think he's a heck of a player, but you could see last night what they did without him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's just a heck of a team that's been built and put together. Yeah, like, maybe, maybe our point was, was off. Lou they are, Will is nasty. I mean, but I mean, he's older, but a vet. Um, I guess maybe maybe, maybe I should have phrased it like this, Nate. You are right. You're absolutely right. Now, you kind of proved me wrong, but maybe I should have just said, maybe <laughs> now we actually have the best team Red instead Velvet. of the best team with the best players. Maybe, that, maybe that's what I was missing. We have the best teams there this year. Just not the best players. Just not the ones with the best players on them. Correct. Uh, let me, yes. so I'm, I, I'm, yeah, I'm rephrasing my, my uh, statement. Because, I, I mean, I think it's – been pretty obvious the Bucks have been one of the best teams over yep. the past two or three years one of the yeah. best teams like just predominantly sharing the basketball etc but you could even argue they lose Chris Middleton I don't yeah. even think that team's anywhere close to like he I I said going into the playoffs after I watched a couple games that they played I was Chris Middleton is their x factor because mm-hmm. once again and and that's not Gian, Giannis is still their best player mm-hmm. but Chris Middleton is their x factor like if you're going to a bucket late Giannis isn't going to be able to create a shot to get it because they're going to all key in on him. However, right. you get to Chris Middleton, he can do so many things. I mean, even against the Nets, he, he went – when Giannis dropped the pass, Chris Middleton got right by KD and dropped a bread basket. Mm-hmm. In Giannis' bread basket, he just dropped it and didn't finish. But, like, there's – Chris Middleton is fin- – I, I love Chris Middleton's game because it is Dude. so simple. It is so simple. He doesn't do anything crazy. Yeah. But he just like you can tell he's in the lab and he does knows where his spots are. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. I love Chris Middleton. Yeah. Chris Middleton, if you ever watch this show, make sure to tune in to this one. Um, episode 42 of the Mind of Coach podcast. Welcome oh, in. 42, our uh, Jack <laughs> Robinson episode. Our, um, I know, mm. yeah, um, that's not basketball. Um, James Worthy, James Worthy, 42. Yeah, I, that sounds really bad. We are, we are a basketball podcast. James Worthy, I know. James Worthy was either 42 or 43. I, I got to look this up, make sure I'm not crazy, but but I'm pretty sure James Worthy was 42. Yep, 42, boom, I'm good. All right, so this is our James Worthy podcast. <laughs> anybody anybody else 42? I, honestly, I, I, I am, no. I, uh, I'm, I'm, Jackie yeah, Robinson, James Worthy. Definitely probably some, but I, I just... Um, well, yeah. well, episode 42, here we go. Yeah, hey, well, uh, without further ado, you ready? Uh, let's get in before we before we get into it, uh, Nathan. Real quick, I do want to say, uh, you know, first everybody have a happy Fourth of July weekend um, with the families. Enjoy that. Also, say it every Fourth of July. R.I.P. Steve McNair, dude. R.I.P. That Steve is a McNair. Nashville local legend. That right is there. Uh, that is uh, rest in peace, Steve McNair. Fourth of July. That was that two thousand eight, right? Two thousand eight. You mm-hmm. remember where you were when you heard the news? I know you. I know you know. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you. Where were you, Asa? I was at home. We had a wedding that day, um, and my dad was doing a wedding uh, late, at like about five, I guess five thirty that night. And um, I remember because Michael Jackson had just passed, mm-hmm. and then you know you turn on the news and you're hearing reports about Steve, and you see pictures of an apartment downtown Nashville, and then all of a sudden a couple hours, you know, it was confirmed he was dead, and it was just 
God, it, it was it was sad, man. It was so sad. Steve was Steve was my LeBron before LeBron. I was Titans to the death. He was everything to Nashville. He was everything to the Titans. Seeing him not be here anymore is is it's tough. And I, I really do think about it every Fourth of July. Every time it comes around, I, I think about Steve McNair. So rest in peace, Steve McNair. Have the happy Fourth of July, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, and please stay tuned for the rest of our episode. We got a great conversation coming up for you. That's cool. I, dude, I had all these things going on when, when I took that page job. Yeah. I couldn't work it. I mean, the Zoom thing was just, and they didn't know what they were doing either. You know, yeah. the people started doing it more and I wasn't having to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, dude, the Zoom has been the, the most, I just feel like in 20 or 30 years, I'm going to look, we're all going to look back and be like, yo, we were, can you believe how much we use Zoom? Like we were on Zoom all the time. It ain't going anywhere. It's gonna, it's gonna it be ain't. Like, it's not, and some of it's good. It's like, yeah, why do we have? Why do I have to go in and have this meeting? Can we just do it on a computer? But also, it's like, goodness gracious, got another Zoom. Did you guys have with your whole team Zooms and watch film? We did. Yeah. See, I couldn't with Huddle. It was all glitchy, and it was so all of our eighteen guys couldn't. Yeah. Um. There's a. There was a. There's an optimized screen option. Um. I don't know if you ever saw that. Um. It, yeah. It wasn't the best, and it was never like a super detailed film session but there were some things that penny w wanted to show on uh over, over zoom i think we had i think it was huddle this person would yeah I yeah huddle's got some good stuff dude i've been talking to them they got some they got a lot of good stuff dude it's great yeah like i it said is. yeah i could look up we already had a camera and i could pull my phone up and i would i was always checking who if anybody was in the gym which yeah, you, was. You, can, you can check and <laughs> you can check and see who, who's watching it and stuff right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can do all that good stuff. Um, but the OBC, so the OBC is actually, they have a deal with, you, you know what Synergy is? Yeah. Yeah, they got a deal with Synergy, and they just renewed it for like another two years. So um, I'm actually supposed to get a free trial, that Huddle stuff coming up soon. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm, but I'm, I'm with Synergy. So Synergy and Sport, I, so. I gotta say, I don't know. I don't know how Synergy is. I know Huddle. In order to get my guys to watch, yeah. like I had to give them homework assignments. So you have to put this clip in. When we were running through a press, you have to show where guys are out, and you'd have to draw it on there like Madden. Yeah. And that was, that was the only way I could get them to watch. Yeah. Or oh, we're going to run. So, you know, I would give three of them different things. And so then, and then they would have to break down the film because they didn't even know how to watch film. Right, so we, right. But that's how. We so hang on, that. was that so? Did you do that during like, uh, like, would you do that on, like, when y'all had a shutdown or something, or were you doing that all the time? Like, did you have, like, so yeah. initially, you had like, but you had regular film sessions, right? Oh yeah, yeah. But, yeah. So initially, what would happen was, all right. So I cheated in everything because no one was ever at the school, so they <laughs> never knew if we were what we were doing. We're talking about the COVID protocols, right? Or are yeah. we talking about the uh, yeah. hey, we're gonna come in at six or seven when no uh, one's around. Yeah. So what I would do is so I started working on that press quite a bit. Uh-huh. And they, they were not they could not press. Yeah. They, they just we just didn't have the just didn't have the personnel for it. Yeah. But what I would do is I would run that press and I would record it and then I would document on there, you're out of position, you should be back here. So you know, they would have to watch it. Right. And, I mean, that's practice. We recorded practice and like, you know, if we were working on this, hey, your your flare, look where you flared to. You need to get deeper. You need to set your pick higher. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, all the plays are, are, are quick hitters or, you know, we recorded them all in practice. So there was right. no excuse. If you don't know them, you better get on and watch. Right. There's no excuse. If you don't know it in practice, all right. on the sideline. Did so? <clears throat> would you do like a little mind? Mind? Would you at? Would you go around? Hey, did you watch? Did you watch yesterday's practice or this clips that I, or anything? And then you know, them give you an answer, and you go back and check. And like, dude, like you, you, you just told me you watched it, but now I'm here on huddle and I'm seeing. Did you ever do any of that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I would call them out. So we actually, when we watched film, you know, it, it, we watched it in the gym on our scoreboard. Yeah, and then they all pulled up chairs and they would watch. Yeah, and there was questions. There was definitely call. Well, why are you there? Yeah. Why are you not hitting? So yeah, they they watch more. We watch more film, I guarantee you, than any other high school did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I that's believe. that's me and Jack. Now I want to say overdoing it, right. but doing it the right way, and being like, hey. and, and you like we did not have to. You were trying to teach them the game of basketball. You were trying to teach them how the game of basketball should be played. Well, and ninety how it should be prepared for ninety percent of it, if not more than that. 
was us watching ourselves. Okay. It, yeah. it wasn't we're scouting Ravenwood, we're scouting independence. It, that's not what it was because yeah. it was about us. It wasn't about what they're doing. Uh, dude, that's funny. So uh, one of our coaches, he, uh, his name is Ben Walker. He played at Creighton. He's in the Creighton Hall of Fame. He played with Kyle Korver. Um, and he said, hey, uh, he's like, man, uh, he played for the dude. He played for uh, Altman, Dana Altman, who's at uh, Oregon State now, right? I think he's at or is it Oregon, Oregon State. Um, he played for Dana Altman. And he said, man, when I was at Creighton, he said, we, we really only spent 10, 12 minutes, you know, a, few, a couple plays here on, on, the, on the opposing team because we were just focusing on ourselves. We got to do what we do good. It's not necessarily about what they do. It's exactly what it's, – it's, it's about we got to make sure what we do good before we can worry about anything else. And I, Especially a high school mind. Like, yeah. you're worrying what they're doing when you can't even – you're going down and setting a screen and you're not even hitting anybody. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think that's – yeah, that's, 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 that's super important at the high school level. Yeah, and you can overclog them too. They're overthinking. Th now, hey, little quick hitters with inbounds plays and stuff. But yeah. I noticed this year, maybe it was COVID, but a lot of these high school teams around this area anyway had gotten away from running inbounds plays. Well, they, they just throw it to half court, don't they? Yeah, just throw it in. Let's throw it in and, and go. And I, I, I've always been like, man, dude, I've, I've gotten 12, 14 points a game off inbound plays. I was about to say, that's money. If you, you can get, heck, if you can get your, you can get your six of them. Six yeah. of them, four, four to six of them a game is, is, is something. That's better than nothing. Right. I mean, might as well run something if you're under there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get it. I, 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 that's funny, man, because I remember, you know, it took, it took me to, until I got to college and I was playing with Casey for a while to really understand, like, all right, this is a time where if we execute this play to the, to the T, how we're supposed to, we're going to get an easy look and an easy bucket. An easy look at the very least and probably an easy bucket. Right. Just from an out of bounds play, so why wouldn't you take advantage of that opportunity and find the best out of bounds play you, you can? And you can also overdo it. You can spend so much time on those things. True. That it, it sometimes it can be. It's just not productive the time. But if you've got a program and you've built it for a few years and it carries over, that was the thing yeah. with me this year. You got one year, okay, dude. They were getting a lot of stuff, but there's yeah. not a carryover now where it gets built upon. Hey. What up, Nate? Been a while since you've seen Aaron. Wow. Hey, Kobe? Yeah, the greatest <laughs> ever. Hey, Aaron, what do you what do you think about LeBron? <laughs> Go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's sitting at home, ain't he? <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Doing good, man. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, if y'all don't mind, uh, we're going to go ahead and get into it. Uh, we got a special guest, Coach Aaron Howard, joining us for the show today. Uh, Aaron played under legendary Coach, uh, Coach King at Brentwood High School. Uh, he, joined, uh, he joined Jan Van Bredekaw's staff at St. Bonaventure. Uh, what year was that, Aaron? I think it was 2001, 2002. 2002. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, I don't know dates well, but when did that first 50 Cent album drop? Because <laughs> that, that was the year. I think it was 2001, 2002, though. Get Rich or Die Trying? What yeah. album? Yeah, that, yeah. that was about 2001. Okay, all right, on to it. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, all right, well, um, <laughs> uh, Aaron also, yeah, then he, he joined Coach King's staff back at Brentwood uh, when Coach King came out, came out of retirement. Aaron was a humongous reason for why Brentwood had such a, a phenomenal run from about 2010, 2011 to 2016. Um, he was behind the scenes. He was on, he was on the bench. He was an assistant coach. He was training us hard uh, in the off season. Um, and then he started coach for speed training. Um, he's been doing that on and off here and there. And then he coached at Page High School um, this past year. Uh, Aaron, so before we get into kind of what went down at Page. Well, well hold up. First, thank you for, have, for coming on, Aaron. Oh, true. I, I forgot that. I'm a big fan of the podcast. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I think it's long overdue. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, I can see where your allegiance lies uh, based on the shirt you have on. <laughs> hey, and this is an OG, too. This is, this is, uh, you remember that uh, album, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince? Uh, parents just don't understand. That's when this shirt came out. I don't know the date, but I know when the albums dropped. <laughs> that was a tape cassette. That was a tape cassette. So, uh, anyway. Oh, Aaron, it, 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 I'm sorry. It is a pleasure to have you on, man. It's a pleasure to have yeah, you absolutely. on. You've been a uh, big influence in my basketball journey. Um, you really have. Uh, so back to what I was about to say, though. You were you had a 17 and 10 overall record. This was your uh, your Page High School basketball coach this year, first year, um, and you were 10 and six in the district. Not a tough I mean, coach. I mean, not a tough place to coach either, Asa. Not a, you mean not a not a tough place or not an easy place? 
not an easy place to coach. Yeah, Excuse yeah. me. Uh, I'd say that's a pretty respectable record in the first year. So what I want to ask you is, what what did you take away, Aaron, from the game of basketball this year? Just this one year. Obviously, I don't want to talk about the COVID stuff. I, I'm really past that. But just kind of being a first-time head coach at a high school program, what did you take from, from the game of basketball this year? What did you learn? Things have changed a lot with these kids. Yeah. A lot. A lot that they really have. Um I think, you know, you know, depending on your personnel anyway, you're always changing what and how you're motivating and what you're doing and what you're, you know, there's things I wanted to do, but we didn't have the personnel to do it. So it takes a little while in that first year to figure out what can you do, what can't you do, who do you play? I mean, when you don't have any any pre – our first game was our first scrimmage. So yeah. we, we learn, you know, on the fly. Um, but, you know, work ethic – Things like that, you're having to teach work ethic. And, that you know, I was used to having guys that were willing to put in the extra time. And, you know, I, in practice, I'm having to do the ball handling. Yeah. I have to do yeah. 20 minutes of ball handling. I have to do the shooting drills because they don't get up extra shots. Um, yeah. And it's, 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 just, it's just a change. And you have longer practice. You're teaching them how to ice down. You're teaching them how to recover because tomorrow – is your body's going to be beat up if you're not in this ice bath. So th those things had not been taught to those kids out there. And, and you know, if you're, if you're going to play the right way, and you're going to play hard, and you're, you're, you're going to get into somebody, you've got to take care of your body. And, and you've got to teach that. And nutrition and e everything, that, that's not easy for a high schooler to grasp. So it's constant over and over and over, just trying to drill it in. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me a little bit about – um, you, Asa mentioned about St. Bonaventure and being a, now at a high school program where you were at Brentwood and now you took over your own high school program and at page last year, what, what was the biggest difference, I guess you would say between either college to high school or even Brentwood to page? Uh, from, I, I remember that, that was a loaded question, right? It was, and I'll take it down this, this path. Um, when I left college and went to high school, it was the speed. Gotcha. And I, I, I had to adjust to that because I actually thought these kids were not giving 100% effort. Mm -hmm. well, we're, we're running suicides and we're doing this. And why are they so slow? What's going on? Well, they're, they're <laughs> high schoolers. They're not young men yet. Yeah. So, but when you're, when you're used to watching, you know, you know these – these young men running, you know, the athleticism changes and that's all you've seen for a year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and I was, when I was at St. Bonaventure, you know, that's the A-10, the Atlantic 10. Yeah. And, Great conference, by the way. And, and during that time, I think they made the elite eight with St. Joe's. They had Jameer Nelson and Delonte West. Loaded. I believe that's who won. Um, you know, Don Chaney was still at Temple. Wow. Um, so that's a le legendary coach. Uh, so, so you, you did with that year you were there. Did you uh, did y'all get y'all played at Temple against against John Chaney? Yeah, we played at Temple, and then yeah. of course they played at our place as well. That's pretty. And, cool. and 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 Chaney, he sat down on the bench during timeouts, and his guys stood around him because he was just at that age. Yeah. No, that's so that's super interesting because I have personally heard. Um, that just going to high school basketball from college basketball can be difficult when you are a basketball mind because you care about basketball to such an extent and high schoolers, I mean, they might just be passing time with it. So if, if you don't mind, just elaborate a little bit on how you were trying to, um, I guess, connect to players, students, et cetera, that don't have the same love for basketball that you might have, but you still have to coach. Right, Nate, and you're absolutely right. Um, in college, they're there on a scholarship. You are doing a whole lot more work. You, you can't take that down to high school, and I learned that real quick. I'm, I'm trying to do these things, but th these kids got to get home and study. They, they can't be in a three-and-a-half, four-hour practice sure. you know, with, with weights before that I wanted to do and, and all that. But, you know, I, and you guys, you guys would know this. It, it's a job. When you're playing in college, it, it is a job. You're going 100%. to school, but, but it is a job. So, yeah, and finding that balance is hard, and also finding what motivates a high schooler is it's it's different. What, hey, what can you give? What what do you want to give? What 
And I'm sure every single person is different too. Oh, absolutely. And I think this year, one of the things I did learn is, you know, I got to a point we lost, I think we lost three games in a row around Christmas time. And then I thought the season was over. Three losses in a row. Oh man, I never had that happen ever. Yeah. Well, um, Asa and I sure had a uh, sophomore year. We, we had a few um, go in a row. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, you, you know, you, hey, you, we got our, our group, you know, team text and, you know, a question, you know, I asked them, I said, you know, I want to hear from everybody. Uh, what do you love or what do you hate about the game of basketball? And, you know, those responses will tell you a lot about how much effort and what they're going to put into the team. It, it really did. And that's, that's not something five, ten years ago I would have ever done. I would have never mm -hmm. asked that question. That that came from what's motivating these guys. What do they want out of this? Because I know what I want. I'd, I'd be in there 10 hours a day practicing if I could. That's not them. Yeah, I mean, and that's super interesting because, yeah, like you said, I mean, just everybody is not you, me, or Asa. And the fact that we just love the game of basketball to a higher level than the normal average human being does. <laughs> Um, Aaron, I do, I want to get back to Jan Brand Brett and your time at St. Bonaventure here in a second. Uh, but first what I, right, so talk to us about the page exit, um, this year, obviously I, I threw out your record earlier. You had a really good re uh, year mm. and then, you know, uh, some unfor what, what, what happened with the page, the teaching thing, what, what was going on with that? How are you feeling about it? Uh, where's your head at now? I, you know what? I, I honestly believe that it's for my whole high school basketball coaching career, which has been 15, 16, 17 years, somewhere around there, it's always plagued me that I did not teach, mm -hmm. at least down in the South. I think they're a little bit ahead of that in the North. I think it's slowly starting to move down South. Um, but I, I don't want to teach. I don't, I don't want to be a, a, you know, a teacher that's there at the school all day and then, hey, I'm going to cut corners when I get to practice because I've been around it all day. I was going to give 100% to it. So... Whether they wanted, you know, a teacher or not, you know, the, the two coaches previous, you know, prior to me getting there were not teachers. So um, I, I'll be honest with you, man. I really honestly believe I'm from the old school. I'm cut from that cloth. I believe everything he does, I'm going to outwork <laughs> you. And, because that's what I got control of. I can outwork you. I'm, I, I might not be the best coach or – I might not be the best player or what that, but I, I promise you I'll work, I will outwork you. And I think a lot of the things that I, were, I was doing, I mean, we kept notebooks in high school. I mean, we were taking notes every single day. We were watching film. We watch more film, I guarantee you, than a lot of high school teams do. And I think that becomes a little much these days when parents, you know, hey, they got this to do and they got that to do and they got that to do and they got this to do. And, you know, I sometimes I just feel like, hey, you need one thing to focus on to decide if you love it or if you're passionate about it. And I think that was another thing that I learned this year was where's the passion in a lot of this stuff and what's the passion and what you like and do kids have enough time with something to realize they love it or is it just on to the next? Mm. And, and that's what's going on with, with our high school kids today. And it's, uh, it's eye opening um, to see how things have changed and progressed and, and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so, Asa, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I know I'm, I'm just jumping in here. Um, so when you get your next high school opportunity, what is something that you have learned that, hey, I might not do it this way? And no, I got to do it this way. I, it, this really worked for me. You know what, man? I'm not changing anything. I'm not changing anything. I'm really not. No, I'm really not. And, and the, re the, re the reason is, is because – the kids and my players, after it was all said and done, they understood. They, they, I still talk to them. I mm -hmm. coach Asa. How oh, hey, can, so let, since, now that you made that comment, I, you know, obviously I've been over to your house recently. We've talked a good bit. Talk to us about how and how you know that, and some of those ways that they that they showed appreciation mm -hmm. for what you were doing. Yeah. No, I got seven letters from the guys. Uh, you know, seven of the guys wrote me letters and. I mean, would you? I'm like, I did, I did this right. I left it all yeah. out there. I did it right. They know I was tough on them, uh, but they they realized at the end of the journey. I, I used the old Kobe Bryant, the rest at the end 
not in the middle. And for every kid that meant something, if you're a senior and you're not going to play basketball after this, this might be the end after this season. If you're, if you're a sophomore, your end might be in a few more years. If you're going to play college, your end might be there. So I just asked for them to give me everything until the end. And I think that resonated with them when it was all said and done. I think they were like, okay, I, we got to go all the way. Listen, let's be honest. Paige is not a winning culture. So to try to change all that and try to teach them, hey, this is what you have to do in order to compete and be successful. Um, they realized that it's hard work. And they, I don't think they realized what hard work was. And I, I don't think a lot of us did when we were young. You, you realize no, that? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, so yeah, Nate, no, we, absolutely. We, 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 the reason I brought that up, um, I was at, Aaron actually let me read one of those letters that uh, actually a couple of them that one of the kids gave it uh, gave to him, um, and I read them, and a couple of them, I mean, were emotional. I mean, almost brought me to tears uh, coming from a player to a coach, you know, a guy that I know so well, and you know, I kind of think I looked at Aaron after I read them, and I was like, man, like that's that's the whole point of coaching right here. You did your job. You did your job. These kids. Successful season, absolutely, because of those. Good job, man. You had you had you had seven to ten kids that wrote you a letter and that poured their heart out into that letter and were appreciative of everything that you had done for them this year. And that's that's the end of the goal, Nate. Right? I mean, we, yeah. If a kid is showing yes. that, you know, that appreciation, what else can we yeah, do? Yeah, and and let me add on to that is, I think, and once again, who cares what I think? But I truly believe that. Coaching isn't all buddy, buddy, buddy the whole time. Now, you're obviously going to have people that just gravitate towards you more, but it's the lessons that you're teaching throughout it all. And it sounds like from what you've done, although it might not have been exactly, you know, rainbows and flowers the whole time, um, it sounds like it at least meant something and they were able to take it into a next step of life or they were to able or not too able, they were able to learn from it and be like, okay, this is actually like stepping back from it. This is what I learned. I, because, I mean, you can look at Coach King, Asa, and Coach Howard. I mean, you can look at Coach King or you can look at Coach McNatt or Coach Alexander, whoever that might be, whoever coached you along the way, Coach Van Bredekoff. Um, and it's all, it's sometimes you're like, man, why did they do that? Like during the moment, you're just so caught up on, gosh, I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. And then you look back on it. It's like, oh, wow. Well, this is teaching me a lesson or this has at least helped me in a way that now I've carried it into my normal day life. And so I, I guess that is what I'm saying is, yeah, it sounds like from what you're just describing, Asa, and what you've described that your coaching wasn't the most fun all the time, but at least it was something that they took. Worthwhile and, and made a difference. Yes, it was worthwhile and it was something that meant something instead of it just being surface level and move on with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that that truly just speaks for itself on seven letters, ten letters, whatever it was. Right, Nate. I'll, let me share a quick story with you. Being a point guard, uh, my my point guard, senior point guard this year, was um, he started as a junior and played a lot as a sophomore. Okay. Okay. So he started his whole junior year, so now I go in, he's a senior. So we're like a day or two before our first game, and he's not making times on running. Mm. So I'm notorious for throwing kids out for not making it. We're running the suicide. You don't make it. Go home and start studying. Don't want you in here. I mean, I'll get down to five or six kids sometimes if, they, if they're not making it. There's, there's no reason at that point they can't make it, especially if you're a leader of the team and a point guard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what I wanted him to do as I threw him out, I wanted him to be like, oh, no, you know what? Let me get back on the line. Let me run it and make it. He didn't, he didn't take that. So he didn't have leadership. So I'm like, okay, we got, we got to do some leadership work here. Comes back the next day, horrible execution, can't run through the plays. So now we get in our first game. I don't dress him. I don't dress him for the first four or five games of the season. He's still practicing. Finally, he he called, he texts me and he says, what do I have to do to dress out? Not what do I have to do to play? What do I have to do to dress out? That's where his mind was, dressing out, not playing. So I, uh, I said, I'll meet you at 5 a.m. tomorrow at the gym. 5 a.m., high schooler. I get in there about 4.30. I start running because I wanted to be sweating already. You know, I want to do the old Michael Jordan, Kevin Garnett, where Kevin Garnett shows up to work out and Michael's already been there an hour just killing. Yeah. So I took that, I took that little note. Just like, yeah. Bring it wet, man. So he, he gets in there and uh, we go through, we just go through some drills. 
go through some drills, make him break a sweat. He's kind of getting after it. And then I'm just, I'm kind of, I'm pulling him up saying, look, man, here's the deal. We need you to be a leader. So more days than not, there's seven days in a week. That means four days a week. You're going to have to grab these guys before, after practice, and you're going to have to put them through these drills I just did. You're going to have to do it. I can't do it because they're only going to listen to so much of me. You've got to take the reins and do that. He started dressing, but I, I still did not, you know, I wasn't starting him. But he earned that back. He never complained. He just did whatever I said. And by the end of the season, it was hard to take him out of the game because he had embraced this, you know, this leadership. He wasn't just yelling at a kid anymore. He was teaching the kids at this point. This is what we need to do, and this is why we have to do it. Coach, and like, Coach I got chills. Like, like that's like, what it's uh, about. A lot of kids, a lot of kids, some, some kids probably would have been in a different school by game three. Well, and, and see, yes. see, and that, that was a thing is I knew we got, we got to ride it this way with you. With a few other kids, that wouldn't work. The parents would have stepped in. Someone else would have stepped in. You're not doing it right. His parents stayed out of it. Let us handle it. And it helped our relationship so much. It helped our team's chemistry. It was just. And it, it was probably it, way better. And it was better for you in the long run. Yeah, and I, I think there's probably a mutual respect that we'll have forever. I hope I still talk to that kid, you know, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Uh, hmm. He ever needs anything, he could always come to me because he he went through it. But he understood, I think, at the end, you know, it was the hardest season ever. He told me it was the hardest season ever, but it was my favorite basketball season ever. It was the best experience I ever had. That's amazing, man. That's absolutely. I, I mean, I'm, I can't exaggerate this. If I could zero in on my skin right now, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I legitimately got chills because, because it's not easy. I mean, Asa, you know, it is not easy to be a good basketball player. It is not easy. I mean, nobody remembers all the workouts you put in with Jamal and Spencer, and outside of that, nobody remembers the time I was up at five in the morning trying to get in the gym and work out. Nobody remembers how hard it was when something that you did that you truly love you failed at and had to pick yourself up or had someone that encouraged you along the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's beautiful coach. I'm yeah. sorry. Ace, I had they, they, they see the final product. A lot of people, right. Which is the game. Correct. And that, Correct. that's my, that's my least favorite part of it. Yeah. I mean, it really is. That's my least, the workouts. Not that workout. you don't like it, but it's just, you know, there's yeah, it's the process. Yeah. The yeah process. It's the, it's the whole process. It's, it's the whole interaction. How can I motivate what, Hey, what's working here? Hey, how did you learn this on the film? What this workout, this practice, the, that's the best times. Yeah. Yeah. The bus rides. You can't, the, those are the all, that's what makes the whole thing, you know, worth it. It's the relationships. It really is. Yeah. I feel like we, we remember Nate more bus rides than we do games sometimes, you know, bus I mean, rides and meals, no doubt. Bus about rides it. and meals. You remember more than the games. Oftentimes people, people don't realize it till it's over. Uh, all, those, all those healthy meals where you weren't eating out at fast food restaurants, right? <laughs> yeah, no, we definitely didn't eat pizza for most of our meals. Yeah, but, we, uh, <laughs> Um, Aaron, pivoting a little bit here, uh, talk to us about your time uh, in more detail at uh, St. Bonaventure. Um, I know you were kind of in an ops role, maybe a video coordinator type role. I know they phrased it differently back then. Um, obviously, now we have things like Synergy, Sports Code, Huddle, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm assuming back then it was more tapes and recordings and DC, uh, VCR players. Um, just yeah, way, back then, way, yeah. Back then. <laughs> way back then. Way back then. So I, I bring that. I say all that to say we mentioned change earlier and how things have changed. Mm -hmm. Obviously, yeah. college basketball and those roles and things are different now. How was it then? What was it like for you? What'd you take from it? Where is it now? That's really yeah. Great. That's actually how I started coaching was. Van Bredekov had an opening and he called me and said, Hey, do you want to move? I was living in Atlanta at the time. You want to move up? Uh, and so I went up there. I think they called it uh, director of operations. Yeah. Yeah. Still got that. Yep. Yeah. But that, that was whatever your GA, your videos, all that. And that was all on VHS. Yep. So when you wanted to get a tape, for instance, we played Davidson but we go down to Alabama to play before we go over to Davidson. You, you're calling a school. You're like, can you send this at this ho to this hotel in Birmingham, Alabama or whatever, because we're going to be there on that night. And you're just hoping those two or three tapes come in. And, you know, th then you got the VCRs that you're going up, hooking up in the coach's room and you're sitting there watching them. 
And then we had what was called a jog shuttle because so Billy McCaffrey uh, played at uh, he, he was one of the assistants played at Vanderbilt and I learned a lot from him undersized guard radar foot coming I learned a lot of little technical things from him mm-hmm. and uh, you know he he would just say hey I need hey Mike Gansey I need uh, every time he touched the ball so I had to go through the jog shuttle and rewind so you had to watch the whole tape there's no skipping ahead. So needless to yeah. say, the, the only sleep I got is when we were on the airplane. <laughs> I could just try to sleep because, I mean, if you're in the hotel or, you know, after practice, we broke all that stuff down, man. It was it was wild. Yeah. <clears throat> no, absolutely. I, Asa, you know it. I know it. I mean, you're <laughs> – college basketball is a different world. I mean, after games, it, I mean, as a player, you knew that it ended, right? Like, okay, I mean, you think about it the whole night. There's no doubt about that. But – you but then, as a coach you're in the you're in the in the room with your head coach the other assistants and you're watching this and breaking it down mm-hmm. and trying to figure out what you're going to do the next game and then you got to turn around and watch the next team mm-hmm. so right and, and th- that was a valuable exp- I, I learned how to watch film through that because i didn't know i mean when we were in high school it was the same thing we might watch a clip or two of the kids but i mean you're that was somebody you're playing beach high school down the road. You meet somewhere halfway and the coach gives you one and you know, they've taken right. certain things out of the video. I mean, that yeah. you're driving, you're like meeting somebody in a parking lot to exchange. Well, exactly. Them. You know, that's the nineties, man. But it's, you know, I learned how to watch Van Bredekoff was, you know, his dad, obviously it's in his blood. He coached for several years, you know, Lakers. And so he, he just knew, he knew exactly. I mean, he was coaching at Vanderbilt when Kentucky had that team with Antoine Walker and Tony Delk and McCarty and Pope and all those guys that went to the NBA. And he knew exactly what they were doing now. Stopping it's a different story, but he knew exactly what they were running. He could call it every time. Yeah. Just years and years and years of watching film and understanding the game of basketball. So that, that, that's invaluable to learn that at that age. Uh, but like you said, when you go to high school, you got to find a balance and not overdoing it. And she's helping us unpack some things and finish some wallpaper. So we had to move my bed out back from the wall. So sorry that took a little bit long. Well, I didn't know they still did wallpaper. I thought people were just painting these days. I thought yeah, they well. <laughs> All right. Hey, what, 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 did you, what were you saving? Uh, oh. Well, I, I was just, I was a little disappointed from all the podcasts I watched because I support what you guys do and I like how you bring coaches together, but I, I was really hoping to see that Muhammad Ali poster in the background. I know, I know. I, man, I knew you were going to, I knew, I knew, I knew it. I knew it. Yo, all right, so my parents are moving today, Aaron. So there's a lot going on. I don't have the same, you know, there's moving, literally moving parts everywhere. So I, I didn't have a setup. They, literally today, I didn't have the setup. And literally, so, Asa and I are working from a new setup. This is a new setup for both of us. True, it, it is. I, I, Aaron, I knew you were going to say Glad I could be the first in the new setup, guys. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. All right, Aaron, so you were talking about uh, – you mentioned something a little bit ago. You said that's really where you learned how to watch film. Mm-hmm. Um, explain what you mean by that. How, explain what you mean by that. I mean, I think it just speaks for itself, right? Jan Van Bertikoff played uh, pro ball for the New Jersey Nets – the Denver what's, uh, yeah, what specifically was pointed out to you that helped you learn how to watch? Just, I mean, just things to look for. Yeah. Um, and it was it was different because Van Bertikoff would look at exactly what they're running. Right. Mm-hmm. This is what they're running. They're going to do this. When I watched it with Billy McCaffrey, he look at his mannerism here. Look how he likes to do this. Or you, you would just catch a little something. And then we also had another coach, Mark Wade, which I don't know. He played for UNLV. He played in a national championship game and lost against Bob Knight uh, and I think it was 78 against the Indiana Hoosiers. Yeah. Uh, he had 20-plus assists in a championship game in the 80s. It was kind of unheard of. Wow. He had a whole different look on, you know, the way he watched film. So just to pull here, it's just like you guys do now, just like I still do. I'm always pulling something from here, stealing from here, mm-hmm. take it from here. Hopefully you get – certain personnel where you're like, oh, I remember that. Let me pull this. Let me use this. Let me do this. So I think you just, you know, first year coaching, what I didn't know what to look for. What do you – I'm just watching guys go up and down. It's, you know, it's, you never can watch a game as a fan anymore. When you watch 
the NBA playoffs right now. But like, why are they running that? Why do they do that? It didn't work here. You, you're always trying to break it down. You, you never can really watch it as a fan I, anymore. I, I got to say something because that is so true. Since I've, since I've got into the coaching profession compared to just playing, I've looked at more, okay, what are they running? What are their actions here? What are, their, are they going to run a set out of this timeout? What are they going to run? I mean, we could obviously go to – Monte or Monty Williams and what he ran to win that game on the alley oop and what in Jeff Van Gundy is literally calling. He said, I would run a fake for um, Booker right here in order to get Andre Ayton an opportunity at the baskets. And so there's little things that you look and as a player, you just had no idea that this was even part of the game. Like, I mean, you did, but you didn't, you didn't understand exactly what went into it. You're trying to get that switch. Try to get that switch so you get a mismatch and you know you can get that bucket or, or whatever it is. So it somewhat ruins – I don't like to say it ruins the fun of it, but it, it changes the way you're looking because yes. you're constantly – oh, if Evaluating. I what would I do, you know? Exactly. I completely agree with that. Yeah. It is different. It is different watching. Um, uh, Aaron, I'm, I'm pivoting again here real quick. Um, pivot, pivot, pivot. So – I, I remember one of the, there. So I, if I you were LeBron, you'd be dragging that pivot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> to go. oh, Asa, that's your guy. I am dreading. I am dreading the last rapid fire <laughs> question so bad. Now, I'm, I'm, in, I'm literally trying to come up with, with ways to phrase this last rapid. Whatever. We'll, that we'll save it for later. Giannis or PG. Aaron, this is ser- seriously. Um, so you know, I mentioned earlier how you, you had a, a huge part in the success that Brentwood had from about twenty. Uh, 10, 11 to about 16, um, you know, I mean, you, you groomed us every single off season from April uh, to, uh, to to uh, late October, you know, you, you were there every step of the way. And what I'm getting at is this, you, you had a, you had kind of had a saying or a quote that you would tell the guys um, when it came to off season conditioning and running uh, you said, you know, you, you told the guys, Hey, running isn't always punishment right? It's not a bad thing to run. We have to get in shape. We have to be ready. We, we got, we have to run these sprints in order to be in shape. Maybe not for this, we maybe not for this first week or the second week, but on down the road later in the season, when it comes tournament time, our bodies aren't going to break down on us. That's what this is. It's not, a, this isn't a punishment. I just want you to talk about that and kind of your approach to um, off season, preseason conditioning. So really where that all comes from is, I'll be honest with you, I guess the nucleus of it came from watching the Arkansas Razorbacks in 40 Minutes of Hell with Nolan Richardson, right? Yeah. Scotty Thurman, and Corlos Williamson, and full court pressing. And, well, if you want to do that, you, you got to be in good shape. Mm-hmm. And, and keep in mind, this is, this is one thing about the college game that's changed in my lifetime that I don't like is the TV timeouts. Because I believe that there were, there were teams that could be in better condition, but maybe not as athletic or maybe not as, a, as good of a basketball team. But what you could do is you could make it uncomfortable by pressing the entire game and making them play at a tempo that they didn't want to play at, right? Yeah. I'm, I, so, yeah. And, so, and it's the same thing. Kentucky had that for a little while under Patino with those guys I mentioned earlier with Delton. They could full court press and do it for an extended period of time. And that's what I wanted to do in high school. And I I remember Coach King telling me, it was your freshman year, you weren't there. Yeah. But I I would do it all game. And I remember him telling me, he goes, you'll get a little mileage out of that. And I was like, what what do you mean? And he's like, well, you'll be able to spot it and do this. I was like, no, I want to do this all game. It may not reflect until the fourth quarter, but I want to play this way the whole game. But with that comes a trade-off. You do what I say defensively, and I'll give you a little bit of a leash offensively. Um, and so I, with all that comes the strength and conditioning, comes the running, comes the uncomfortable workouts, because that all translates over, because those guys on the other team, they're not used to doing that. So when it gets uncomfortable, they start to fold a little bit. And I saw that a lot this year. We played Cane, Cane Ridge. And my teams were – we were not tired. My, actually, I had a guy say, we could, I, they could play another game after we were done playing. Right, right. And that's just where we were. So I don't – not a whole lot of kids want to do that and go through that because you don't see – you don't see the ending of that. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants immediate gratification where, like you said, Nate, 
He didn't see me at 5 a.m. in there for how many of her years working and working and then going back and lifting weights 6 p.m. in the evening. They didn't see all that. So they don't understand that if you want to be good, if you want to win, you want to get the most out of out of yourself, you got to put that work in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I remember, I remember Aaron, like our junior – I say that um, – our junior year, um, this kind of goes to what I was talking about. Our junior year, we didn't really lift much during the season. And I remember towards the end of the season, our bodies kind of started breaking down on us. Our senior year, we actually did a strict, you know, we lifted three. It wasn't heavy, heavy, but we maintained. and We lifted three times during the season. And I remember just how much better shape we were in down the road our, my senior year as opposed what, to our junior year. What happened year. your senior think, year? Yeah, and I think a lot of that had to do. No, 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 no. What happened your senior year? I'm not talking about that, Nathan. We're talking about. Oh, nothing about, happened? No, we're talking, about the way our bodies, oh, okay. we're talking about the oh, okay. way our bodies felt. And you, three times. you didn't do anything your senior – I got gotcha. you. No. I, I, we, we just want to avoid you making the biggest shot. Yeah, and I lifted weights and, okay. and Aaron did it. Yeah, day. and that was all due to those weights, you know. He had the, uh, <laughs> he had the strength to get that last one up and in, which, by the way, was a, that was a great undefeated Blackman team. That was amazing. probably one of the better games I've ever been a part of right there. That was an amazing team. Um, but anyway, it's to keep going. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, that's all I was going to say. Just, you know, I, I think there's a lot to be said about that. And, I, and, and to you specifically, you know, how much just there is a there, there is there's a certain way to approach offseason conditioning. And I think you, you did that in a, in a really, really, really great way that was able to uh, the message was able to, to get delivered to the players and they could respond in a positive way. Yeah, so I'm actually going to ask. I, I, I'm I'm sorry to interrupt, Aaron. So, what is some ways that you went about your off season workouts? Was it just suicides, or what? What exactly did you do? I mean, I really or think. Do do? I think this all really goes back. Did this guy start it? I don't know. I mean, remember when he was getting picked on by the um, by the Pistons, right? Yep, and bad they boys. Were they were hammering him. Yeah. And he's, hey, I got to get stronger. So he starts working with Tim Grover, and he starts getting stronger. And that was so when he came to the playoffs in that latter part of the season, his body wasn't going to break down and need that break. Well, we saw mm-hmm. Kobe do that too. He, he shot those air balls in the playoffs. Again, who, who was it? Uh, Utah yep. or whatever. He, I got to get stronger. My legs aren't there. I've got to get stronger. And we saw how that helped him down the road. Well, that look, look at – look at – Look at a player today and look at a player in the 80s. They mm-hmm. just didn't – they didn't know back then. Yeah. So you, it's just a given. You do have to – you do have to develop your body for a long run. College, pros, high school, you, you've got to because everybody's doing it to a certain extent. It's just are you doing it a little bit better than the other person or, or what are you doing to stay healthy and find that balance in it all? You know, you you have an old school uh, you have an old school kind of approach to the game. I would say um, there's a lot of old school in me. I think that's why you and I are able to, to get along really well and and have the conversations that we do. What is something it, it, as coaches, if we want the game to go to, to go a certain way, right? We everybody talks about where the college game is going, where the NBA is where the NBA game is going. If if we want the game to go a certain way and want it to look a certain way, whatever that way may be, what do we have to do? in order to, to make that game, to, to keep the game pure in and, and, and the way that we want it to be kept? What do we have to do as coaches in order for that to be so? I think exactly what you guys are doing. I, I think you bring like basketball people together that love the game and keep it some sort of a group. That, that's the one thing you know, I have a little bit of an issue with is now that people – don't everybody in, in college think they're going to the pros? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of them, right? They, they're mm-hmm. not going to go to the pros, right? So same thing with high school. Everybody thinks they're going to get a college scholarship. Um, but I think teaching the, the love of the game, and again, I don't know how you teach passion to someone. I don't know. I've got it. I love basketball. You love basketball. Nate, you love basketball. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people that do that, but um, – I don't, I, I don't know that that's a question that could even be answered with the way things are going. I mean, I, does it make it any easier that NCAA is, have these new rules now that are going on? Is that going to be another hurdle that yeah. – I don't even know that you can answer it. I mean, I, but like I said, to, to, to keep people around and talking about it, 
I mean, if you, I got I got a friend. If you want to talk basketball with me, because I'll do it all night. You know, yeah. it, it don't matter if it's little kids basketball, if it's pro bat. It doesn't matter what it is. I I just love it. Yeah, yeah. So Keep, keeping keeping the conversation going, man. Keeping the conversation alive and people engaged yeah. and uh, and in tune. Um, and know, I think yeah. teaching teaching the history. It's just whenever you're ready, start on teaching them the history. Yeah. Teach them the history. <laughs> I mean, that's what you, you got to learn from all the people before you. Mm -hmm. Just like, I mean, you know, I learned from older coaches that have been in the game. Same thing. I try to give that to my players and I know you guys are going to do the same thing. And I do want to say this. It, it's, it's funny. You brought up the, uh, not funny, but you know, you brought up teaching the history. I, I was, I literally talked to Penny today. Um, Coach, this was this was a crazy story. So Penny, when I, whenever Penny would train me, and I was in fourth or fifth grade, sixth grade, he 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 said to me, he said, "You want to play the game, you got to know the history." And he, and there was a quote that he told me way back then. It was about Ray Allen talking about like you know he he didn't he he, he had a, he didn't make a lot of shots that night. And somebody said, "Hey Ray, you didn't shoot the ball that well." This is back when he was with the Sonics. And uh, Ray said he Ray Allen goes, he said, "I shot the ball great. It just didn't go in." And anyway. That story has nothing to do with it. It was just a thing that Penny had told me back when I was in the sixth grade about learning the history of the game of basketball and just knowing what's going on. I do think it is incredibly important to teach people the history of the game of basketball. That was my point during that whole rant. Thanks for Absolutely. coming. Absolutely. And I want to say something about uh, Penny because this is something you, you may not uh, have known. Uh, several years later, there was an ABA team, Music City Stars, that was here in uh, Nashville. Jan Van Berthoff coached that. And I was assistant coach. I'm going to say I was assistant coach, but basically I just ran the drills and whatever, you know. Yeah. But I was learning, and some of those guys that were on there were all local guys. I mean, like Mario Moore, Ronnie yeah. McMahon, Penny. I think Josh Golden played a little bit for them. Yeah, uh, so. Miles Thrash, yeah. old Boomer Herndon. Yeah. I mean, all these guys, but they, they were kind of removed from college. Des Cambridge, one of yeah. the best defenders I've ever seen. He's incredible. Oh, he was unbelievable. And he drove a truck. He would, he would go drive a semi-truck for eight hours and then come in from practice, and he would play full court man-to-man -man the whole time. I was like, who's this guy? Yeah. So you, 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 I'm just learning from those guys, and those were players. So the coaches don't necessarily know it all. It's like if you're running a last-second play and you're like, hey, we're going to run this, and the player looks at you and they're like, they don't feel comfortable running it. Mm -hmm. They're like, we should run this. Well, kind of going to go with what you – if you if – you, you don't feel comfortable running this play, but what do you feel comfortable running? Because I'd rather you feel comfortable since you're going to shoot it. So I think you do have to take from other people. You got to check your ego. You've got to check your ego. You mm. really do. Leave your ego at the door. Yep. Always. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's amazing. Check your ego. Maybe the name of this podcast, Aaron. Um. All right. Hey, you mind getting into uh, some rapid fire questions with us? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Um. Last technical foul. Oh, for me? Yeah, for you. Uh, I don't – I was coaching freshman ball. I don't remember what year it was. You, you, been you, you were a senior in high yeah. school. <laughs> and I got two and thrown out. You did get thrown out of the game? Yeah, I got two and thrown out. <laughs> what you get? What'd you get thrown out for? Uh, I told my guys to put their hands in their pants because they kept calling all these fouls. Uh-huh. I was telling my team, but I guess the official thought I was showing them up. So, you know, you got to sit down. So then after the quarter break, I said, hey, man, I wasn't trying to show you if I was just, you know, telling my team, got another one, get out of here. <laughs> I had no assistant coaches or anything. So my wife comes down out of the uh, stands and she's like trying to tell certain people to go in, you know, in the second half. So, yeah, that was last time. <laughs> um, you, uh, have you ever done to basketball on a 10-foot rim? No. No, were you close? I got a volleyball one time. Okay, uh -huh. my senior year, my senior year of high school, I got a volleyball. Nice, nice. And that's uh -huh. on Brentwood's court. You know, that's a little high too. Yeah, yeah, and the floor is hard. Not, not a very good jumping gym. Not a very good jumping gym. Wasn't a good jumper anyway. Yeah. Um. All right. Okay. You are up three at the end of a game. Do you foul or let it play out? Play it out. Play it out. Got you. Um. Leave your best player in with two fouls in the first half. Well, hold on, hold on. I know I was rapid fire, but do they have Shaquille O'Neal on their team or Giannis? No. Okay, yeah, we'll just play it out. <laughs> um, all right, leave your best player in with two fouls in the first half. Yes, leave them in. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I, I agree with that. Uh, go for the tie or go for the win? Depends. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah, it depends. Are you on the road? Are you not? Are you overplaying? Should you even be in with this ball club? Yeah. What, what's going on? So, yeah, I, I, you got to be in that moment. Certainly. Um, okay, uh, casual or professional on the sidelines? Professional. And that's one thing that's changed, man. I'm watching all these games. I'm like, the, these coaches do not wear ties or anything anymore. That's a shock to me because I used to would have liked that when I was younger. And now you get a little older and you're like, man, this, let's look good. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is more comfortable, though. <laughs> I'm going to have to disagree. I, I'm a big casual fan. Big, big casual, casual fan. Big Occasion, ca occasional professional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, Nate, I, I, am with the, I am with the home – I'd sign up for the home professional and road casual in a heartbeat. If, yeah. If no, we, I agree. I agree. If you're home and you don't have to move all your suits, et cetera, and you just get it from your, your closet, go ahead and put that thing on. Now, I don't know how great it would look if you went professional and the other team went casual. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. Um, all right, Aaron, early morning practice or evening or night practice? Both. <laughs> In the same day? In the same day. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's what you meant when you said both. And I don't know. Nate, he is not joking. <laughs> We probably we probably lift in the morning. There's probably be more stretching and film before the second practice in the evening. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right, Aaron. Uh, if you if, if if you were not coaching basketball, what would you be doing? Watching basketball outside of the game of basketball. Uh, what would be your occupation? What would you want your occupation to be outside of the game of basketball? Uh, um. I, uh, I, I'd like to be a, uh, I'd like to race cars. Race cars? Yeah, I would. Like NASCAR or like, you know, driving down 65? <laughs> no, no, like a, like a NASCAR or a late model or something like that. I don't care if it's on dirt or not. I'd like to, uh, yeah, that'd, that'd be fun. I like that. Wow. Okay. Hasn't heard that one yeah. yet. Um, you don't play any golf, do you? I don't. I got to get you out on the golf course sometime. I got to get you out on the golf course. All right, so no I, handicap. Now, I, now, I used to play a long – when I was young, I lived on the golf course, and I used to play a lot. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I did. But Never got you, you just – you know, as you start to – you got a little older, and it was too slow for me. And now it's getting to a point where I'm getting older, and maybe it, I will get back to it, but – I, I would love to play around the golf with you. Mine went uh, the opposite way, Aaron. Mine went um, – yeah. it was way too slow for me, and then all of a sudden I got to the end of college, and I was like, man, I love playing golf. I just can't because I'm injured. And then now I've got the golf itch. So, yeah. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Should every team make the conference tourney? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they should. Why? I mean, it's a conference tournament. I mean, yeah, they should be invited. Yeah, why not? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, who is the uh, who's the best rapper ever? Ooh, ever? Uh, I go with uh, Andre, Andre Benjamin, Andre Three Thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Nas! I thought you were gonna say Nas. How can you even answer that question? I don't – I mean, look, dude, it's, it, it, answer it. I, I'll answer it. Do you know what is funny, though? If you've been watching the NBA playoffs with, like, uh, you know, Atlanta, every time they go to commercial break, they're playing outcast music. They're playing outcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, last one, the one I've been dreading. Um, you are obviously not a LeBron guy. Um, LeBron, LeBron, LeBron or Jordan? And just Jordan. take it however you want to take it. Jordan. Okay. Why? Because I need that last second shot taken and I need it to go in. What if, what if you don't need the last second shot, though? What if he just gets you there without, and you don't even need the last second shot? What if instead of it being a two-point game, it was a ten-point game and you were up? I, I don't – I wouldn't build a team around LeBron. Oh. I, would, I just, I just wouldn't do it. I don't like. I, oh. I don't. I don't think he's a great defensive player, mm. and I do think he's an unbelievable 
you know, passer, and I think he's very well rounded. But I don't. I want a guy that does, is not going to shy away from that. That's why I love Kobe Bryant. Is because I, sorry. Okay, stop right there. Stop right there. I, I once you were done answering that question, I did want to ask you one more thing. I, since you had the Kobe jersey in the background, you put it up just for the uh, just for the show today, which I, I love. Um, just talk to us real quick, just about a minute or so, just about Kobe, what he means to you, and what he meant to the game of basketball. He's just he's a wonderful spirited guy. And I think one of the things about Kobe is he's my age. And so coming out of high school, like I see him at my age as a kid go into a pro setting where, you know, he, he doesn't even hang around these guys. And he was cocky and, oh, he wanted this. But he never shied away from any of that stuff. And then to see the man he was when he retired as far as, you know, basketball. But you also see, you know, you don't know him, but you see – how he talks, what he used to say when he was younger, and then he gets older, and you're like, oh man, this guy, he he's he's grown up. He's I mean, he's he, wise. He, he's very wise. He was wise, and he was uh, th the one thing that stands out with with me when he talked about work ethic. He was like, hey, you can go work two hours a day, right, or whatever, and you know, you're working two hours a day. You can work two hours, go rest for an hour or two, then go two more hours. Now you're working four hours a day. Now you're up two hours more than the other guy. But you can go back. He would do four, four times a day. Mm -hmm. And he knew that other people's work ethic would never catch up with him. But he made that commitment to himself that he said, I know this window will close one day and I'm going to leave it all out there. So he outworked everybody. Of course, he did have some talent too, but I don't think anyone ever matched his work ethic. Yeah. And, I, and I have a question. Go ahead, Ace. No, you go. You're 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 a better name. No, no, no. My, mine's gonna mine's gonna trickle off of that. Not, it can wait. Go ahead. I was. Did he? I heard. Did he do that polyphasic sleep schedule? I had heard he did. I don't know if that's. I, I, is that true or not? I don't know what the true. I know he did some weird stuff because I know he did not get a whole lot of sleep. No. Yeah. I just I've heard he did it before. I don't know if he did it for a time period. I don't know that I, I don't, I'm not sure. But that polyphasic sleep schedule is something else. I know I know that he, there was an interview I watched where he said he had trouble switching his brain off. But yeah. I imagine with the way his mind went and continuing to move, and move, if he got more rest, he probably may have lasted a few more years. I mean, I don't know how he could go yeah. that that hard without having sleep. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely an integral part on being a successful athlete is you got to get some rest. You wow. got to recover your body, et cetera. But this is what I was going to ask is um, the common debate on ESPN or wherever you look is Devin Booker is the next Kobe. Do you see it? I, I do a little bit. Um, I do too. I just wanted I just wanted to see. And obviously it's it's very premature, but I just wanted to see. I do. And let me tell you the reason. It's not for – what I'm watching him on the basketball court, it's the things that he says. It like, and I'm not a big, I'm not going to watch the after interviews and stuff, but the things he says afterwards or before the game when they're talking to him, I'm like, yeah, he, I think he's kind of got it. And of course, he does have a nice game too. Yeah. But I mean, it's kind of, in, in my opinion, it's the, it's what Chris Paul said. He's an old mind. Like that's, I mean, that's what he, that's what Chris Paul said. He's, he's just an old mind. Like he's an, he's an old spirit. Like he's, He's just an older guy and a younger body. But this is my favorite part is that he's a killer. I mean, he is a killer. And it's, and it's a scorer, and he cannot guard the way Kobe did. I mean, I think that's the one thing that people forget is that Kobe could do it on both ends. And he, he wanted to guard the best player, and he was going to go all out 94 feet. doesn't matter. Right. Now, I don't know if Devin can do that, but, I mean, offensively, it's, it's pretty impressive what he's able to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And you have to understand how many years has he been in the league now? Uh, maybe he was all great out of six. high school, wasn't he? So he's he six, one, six, right? Six or yeah, yeah six. five or six, but he's he, young. He's a one year he's, kid out of high school for college. Yeah, so well, he might need to pick that defense up. Cause I think at this point, Kobe was like, Hey, this defense is just as important as this offense. Cause I know Michael, you know, is in, in the same boat, you know? Yeah. I mean, I would agree a hundred percent with that. I think, I think he's very capable and I think now that he has more people around him um, to help offensively, um, I think he is able to expend a little more energy on the defensive end. I know that's a common excuse, and I honestly truly hate it. But um, it's, I mean, it's true in some aspects as well. Yeah. And hey, putting Chris Paul 
what that was a great move because holy like, cow he he's an old soul but then now you get chris paul and his knowledge how, how does chris paul make every single team better that he goes to i mean he really does that's thank you thank you for uh humbly correcting what i was trying to say when i was trying to say old mind old it's old soul goodness gracious i was, I was trying to say it and i just couldn't flip and say it so i appreciate the humble correction um that you gave uh, me right there but well 100 percent though chris paul is phenomenal yeah, he is. He is. Yep. What? Something for you real quick before we go. Um, you told me one time, you said uh, you were trying to tweak your jump shot, something, your form. I, I, I can't – I don't know why. You, you were out of high school and you were trying to figure something out and you were shooting these shots and you would tweet and you were like, I, I just – it's not working. I don't know. And so I asked you, I saw you a week later, and you go, yeah, I, uh, I'm not doing that anymore. You said, I shot hundreds of thousands of uh, jump shots one way, and why, why would I change it now? And, I, and you went back to do that, and I was like, do you really think you've shot hundreds of thousands of jump shots? Uh, I've done, I mean, do you want my honest answer of how many I think I've shot, I shot? At that time, yeah. Let's see. I, at that time, so that you said I was – so was it before Lipscomb? Yes. I mean, I did some some very some. I don't want to say very loose math. I did some some estimations in my head um, over the years after I got out of college of how many shots I actually think I, I shot, and I, I don't think six hundred thousand is a crazy number at all. Okay. Um, so at that time, I don't think three hundred. I don't think I don't think three hundred thousand is a crazy number. Do you think? It from, does, that's from the from the sixth grade to the time that I graduated from Lipscomb. I, I think six hundred thousand is a reasonable number of shots for me to say so, that. So this question would be for Nate then too. Do you think there's a certain point in your career where you just you cannot change? You've shot so many shots that you cannot change your form. No. You think there there's always? I think it depends on who it is, but well, it's. I mean, my personal thing was it, it was just a feel thing. I mean, I, I would like psychologically tell me I, myself I would just need to tuck my elbow in more and my shot would look the exact same, but psychologically it would mentally prepare me enough to make shots. And um, I mean, I know personally, like I already know that when I release a ball, it's coming off these two fingers. I, I call these my like strong fingers because these are the ones that come off. Some people shoot like this. Some people go middle fingers and everything comes down, you know hand and cookie jar but I, w I was always like these two fingers so I just know I'm I, I want my release to be the same every single time but no I think I, I think you have to continuously improve and learn and that there's different ways to do it however if you're just constantly trying to like tweak something then you're not going to replicate it in the same way every single time I maybe that was too much but right. I don't know if that answered well, your question no I did and and then I want to ask you guys one last question um I know that in like the late 80s and the 90s as well all these these basketball players especially in the nba they talked about coming back the following season with something new right mm -hmm. whether it was carl malone and and the way he was shooting his baseline jumper wh whoever it was they, they came back with something different you know jordan in the latter part of his career came with the fadeaway um so do you guys see that a lot with these college guys? Are you guys encouraging those guys? Hey, what are you coming with this year to build, you know, put in your arsenal? Hey, you, you've got this and it's pretty nice, but you've got to have a counter here. You've got to do this. Mm. Do, are, do you guys still do that? Is that still something that's at the forefront of a, of a good basketball player? We're not only getting better, but I'm coming with this this year. I'm coming with this. Hey, so you want to go first? I <clears> – <throat> Yes and no. Um, I, 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 my answer is going to be that I think in the NB, well, I think in college, instead of trying to just make sure that they add a whole nother part to their game, I think it's really important to focus on what they are good at because when they come back, they're going to have to, they still are pretty much going to have, for the most part, the same role, I think, right? Like you're not going to be a, a three-point specialist one year and then all of a sudden in college and then come back down and you're going to have a back-to-the-basket game and that be able to work it within the system. I think it's I – would, I would tell people, yes, it is important to add to your game all the time, but I think in college it is more important to get good at the one, two, three things you are really good at. So that can work more in the system as opposed to just individual – I don't know. Does that make sense, Nate? Do you know what I'm trying to say? 
I think I understand what you're saying. Um, Aaron, repeat the last part of the question. I, I have my answer, I believe, but I just want to make sure I'm saying it correctly. Is I, it just, do you believe in adding something to your game, correct? Is that, is that the question? Um, right, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, if that's the question, then I might. No, 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 no. It's something different. To, to say, to say, I think what I was understanding from Asa is he's like, hey, if you're a really good three-point shooter, hone in on that skill, work on that craft, and be the best three-point shooter. But, okay, well, why not do that? And then also be like, hey, I've, I've got this goal to whether I'm going to be a, a rebounder or I'm, I'm going to try to drive the lane more, whatever it is. Come back. Yeah, and you can get better hey, at that. But if I got a three – it could be an it could be an offensive. You're just a set three point shooter, right? This year, I'm going to come back with a hat, with a step back, and I'm going to add that into what I'm doing or or whatever. And I'm just I'm yeah. Um, so I would say absolutely that I definitely think that players should go into the off season. And I think it is very important that they're not trying to change their whole game. I, I, I think that's the main thing. And that's essentially I can, what I was trying to say. Yes, like so. Um, going off of what Asa said, I completely agree that you should work on what you're good at more times than not. If you, if you're a three point shooter and you're shooting 38%, well, you better make sure that your catch and shoots are 43% this next year. If that's how you want to improve, because that's the majority of the way you're getting your shots. However, I do think you should go into the lab or whatever, <laughs> whatever you're calling it. And you should add one or two things into your, you know, your bag, um, I got to put the air quotes on it because I mean, that's what, that's what everyone's calling it. Um, every single year, I think you can do that and whether that's, and, and it can be very simple and it doesn't have to be to the common basketball um, fan to see it. It could be, okay, well, I'm going to get really good on a right to left step into my three. I'm going to, every single time I come off a screen, that's the footwork I'm going to work or I'm going to left or right. And I'm going to get really good at that. So those are my two things I'm getting. Okay. So now you're saying like, Oh, I'm a catch and shoot shooter. Well, you're not just a drive, penetrate, and kick, open three shooter. Now you're working on how fast you can get your shot off, how fast you can come off of screen and get your feet ready, et cetera. But, I mean, for instance, I mean, I go back to my high school or my high school college experience a lot, and I definitely don't think it's the way that everybody should do it. But I do know that I improved drastically by just doing one or two things each summer. And I remember going in my senior year, and I was like, I got to be able to shoot off the dribble. And so I worked on two things, really, and it was – a left left dribble hezzy into a three and a right dribble has yeah absolutely and pockets change because i mean for instance i mean cp3 is a great one yeah a great one because he whenever he's going i mean he he still shoots it on his just shoulder. to let y'all know i didn't get any of that that none i don't have any of that we, we don't need it we don't need right. it but he, it like he literally I, wrap, like, I, I i do need to, can i can i wrap this up yeah, real go quick go can, wrap it up. I, I, yeah. I, do, I do need to, to go here in a second We'll wrap it up, man. All right. Wrap all right it up. Okay. Um, and, and I would take Dennis Rodman over LeBron James. <laughs> no, you wouldn't, Aaron. No, you would not. You don't want the best defender and 30 rebounds, and he's going to set – wouldn't take him over LeBron. All the dirty work. We got other people to score and pass. You take him over I LeBron. want him. You over wouldn't take LeBron. him over LeBron. Over LeBron. Oh, my gosh. Aaron. I can't wait to hang out with both of you guys again. <laughs> Aaron, uh, man, Coach Howard, we appreciate you coming on. Seriously, dude, it was long overdue. Uh, my apologies for that. Um, we thank you for coming on. Are you, you're not on Instagram, I'm pretty sure. Are you still on Twitter? Yeah, I still got the Twitter account. You got the Twitter account. I believe that is at Coach for the number four speed. Is that right? You got it, man. Cool. Well, you can find Coach Howard at on Twitter at Coach for the number four speed. Uh, you can find myself on Instagram at the Ace of Spades with a Z on the end. You can find Nathan on Twitter at Coach Nate Moran. You can find him on Instagram at Nate Five underscore Moran. You can find Mind of a Coach on Twitter at Mind of a Coach Pod, and you can find uh, Mind of a Coach on Instagram at Mind of a Coach. Coach Howard, again, we appreciate you, sir. Uh, it was a blast talking to you. We could do it uh, all day long. Um, we'll have to have you on again in the future. But uh, thank you, man. And uh, yo, keep coaching, dude. Keep coaching, man. I want you to keep coaching real bad. Thanks for having me, man. I enjoyed it. Of course, yes, man. Yes, thank of you. Course. You have a good one. We'll talk to you. All right. Be good, man.